Hello revolution students and welcome back to another video on the Russian Revolution area of study 2. In this video we are going to look at Felix Dzerzhinsky, the head of the Cheka. His background, he was a Polish nobleman, but even though he was of noble origins, he was a fanatical Bolshevik, he believed in a workers' revolution within Russia and throughout the world, and he was fanatically loyal to Lenin. He was the head of the Cheka and he was made the head of the Cheka in December 1917 and in this role he contributed to the uh, Bolsheviks uh, securing their authority in uh, Russia in a number of ways. So for example, as leader of the Cheka he helped to consolidate Bolshevik authority within Russia by waging class warfare against class enemies such as the bourgeoisie and rich peasants, those kulaks who the Bolsheviks uh, argued were exploiting the masses and hoarding grain and making unhealthy profits off the poor peasants. He also played a key role in helping the Bolsheviks to win the civil war and he did this through leading or being a key leader of the Red Terror. So in the economic aspect of the Red Terror there was war communism and grain requisitioning in which Cheka units went out into the countryside and forcibly took grain from the peasants, even the grain that the peasants needed to use for the following year, uh, seed grain in order to grow their crops. This, uh, this forcible requisitioning of grain, uh, as you would have studied in your study of area study two, once the Bolsheviks got into power, eventually led to a famine in 1920-1921. He also played a key role in the political aspect of the Red Terror and that involved the executing of political opposition and political opponents, the most famous being the Tsar and his family in July 1918. Let's now go on to a couple of key quotes and stats. So we'll start with some key quotes from Dzerzhinsky. And it gives a real insight into his character, both his character and his role as head of the Cheka. You can see there, I've got a, a photo of uh, the Cheka, the chiefs of the Cheka, and Jasinski is right in the middle there. Okay, the first key quote we have from Felix Jasinski is, do not demand evidence to prove that the prisoner has opposed the Soviet government. Your first duty is to ask him to which class he belongs, what are his origins, these questions should decide the fate of the prisoner. The second quote, Dzerzhinsky declared the revolution could not be saved except by exterminating the enemies of the working class. And finally, shortly after the murder of the Tsar and his family in July 1918, Dzerzhinsky told the press, the Cheka must defend the revolution and conquer the enemy even if its sword falls occasionally on the heads of the innocent. So he is admitting there that the Cheka does kill the innocent, but these innocent deaths are worthwhile so long as uh, the opponents of the revolution are destroyed. Okay, let us now have a look at some key stats. And these key stats are all to do with uh, the Cheka and uh, they're linked to Jasinski because of his role as head of the Cheka. So the Cheka employed around 200,000 people at their height during this time. They were involved in administering the 350 labour camps which Lenin established by his death in 1924. And that's where political opponents were sent to. Uh, other revolutionary church leaders, um, whites and so forth. And then finally, some death stats. During the Red Terror, it is estimated that 50,000 people died However, that is only a guesstimate. It's possible that as many as 500,000 people died. And I got that stat from Adcock. Let's have a look at a couple of historical interpretations now about Jasinski. And the first one you can see there I've got from Michael Lynch. And he writes, Trotsky doubtless had in mind the Cheka, which was established in December 1917 with the specific task of destroying counter-revolution and sabotage. Within a very short time, this special state police force, headed by the fanatical Felix Jasinski, had become a byword for systematic terror. 
and obviously Felix Jasinski played a key role in that. Our second historical interpretation is from Richard Pipes, and he writes, In Moscow, Jasinski ordered the execution of several high officials of the Tsarist government held in prison since 1917. All were has-beens of no threat whatsoever to the regime. One cannot therefore escape the impression that their murder was Jasinski's personal revenge for the many harsh years he had spent in prison while these men had been in charge of justice and the police. So we know that Jasinski was sent to prison a number of times for being a Bolshevik, and it was in prison where he was tortured that he learned many of the torture techniques that he would then use on his opponents once he got into power as head of the Cheka from December 1917 onwards. I hope this video on Felix Jasinski has helped with your study of the Russian Revolution area study too. And I will see you next time. Goodbye.